Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Way D, aka Dream Slide. Um, today, I'm doing another tutorial for you guys about Pro Tools INOs. INOs stand for inputs and outputs. It's how the sound goes into your system and comes out of it. Um, Pro Tools has actually a pretty neat feature with the INO setup range. It helps you um, organize, label, and do all kinds of cool stuff like that. So we're going to do a quick walkthrough on that one. Um, now you go to setup. Uh, I knows or I slash O to uh, select your um, input output uh, diagram here. Um, you can do your I knows for your bus, your uh, inserts. This is how you audition stuff. Say you're sampling through Pro Tools. Um, if this isn't selected or set up right, when you select the play it back in the um, media portion of Pro Tools, it won't you won't hear the sound because your inserts not selected um, outputs how the sound leaves your system say to your monitor speakers or if you have a headphone mix or to another room depending how your studio is wired and of course inputs how the sound gets in there now mine I'm using a 003 interface as you can see all the digi design interfaces have their own little icon and things up here uh, today we're using the 003 I'm not sure if it does that for the M audio stuff but if you have an inbox 002 even the um, new uh, guitar uh, the 11 le rack uh, it'll all have a little icon up there and a signal path for it now the 003 that I'm using have 8 in and 8 out I am using also a M Audio Octane connected via ADAT. Um, Pro Tools didn't recognize the Octane on its own, you know, to label it. I labeled it myself. So if you have something connected and you're like, oh, well, mine didn't do that, it, that's that's something custom. But um, pretty much that's 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 actually brings me to my next point is that you can actually label these. Say you have a complicated studio setup and um, you have a lot of outboard gear such as EQs, compressors, and whatnot. Um, this is actually pretty cool. Say your EQ is always connected to the end of your interface on 1 and 2. You can uh, name it as such as the EQ out goes into 1 and 2. The compressor out goes into 3 and 4. Or you can even break it down further. Now these are all stereo setups here um, to handle two inputs at a time. But you can open a little folder kind of thing here and it brings down a mono signal path as well. Now, say you always use the same mic, say my five and six mic I always use for when I'm recording a rock band or a drum set rather, and I use it for the kick drum. Now, granted, it says kick drum for three and four. You can break it down even further. Instead of having kick drum L and kick drum R, let's say for microphone in my number five, I always use the beater mic for a five. And for um, six, I always use uh, the sound hole mic. So granted, this top part here says kick drum. When you really break it up, it'll say beater and sound hole. And I mean, it's cool. You can label your things like that. Once again, it helps you get organized. Um, now, even with the beginners out there, all this stuff is it's kind of basic. But um, even if your studio is real small, you know, if you if you stick with it, it'll grow. It all your 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 studio will always grow. Uh, and this stuff here, granted, it's so basic. It is so vital for like when you start using patch base and different setups for you know your different sessions like these can be just templates say when i always record rock bands i always do eq eqs as one and two compressors as three and four and then i go for the, the drums hit from there you know you can use these as templates um and like you know just once again to help you guys organize and i mean it's the same for uh the outputs as well like um i have one and two is the master three and four goes out to the vocal booth or the uh, live side where i do the drum recording or guitar recording or you know vocals and whatever and you can label these as well like say actually i use a patch bay five is six i should actually have a label but um usually if i'm working with pro tools and i'm editing and mixing down and there's some things i like i actually send it over to the npc to get like sampled so you know you can have just like npc out or two npc labeled here and uh, like i said you can save these as templates now if for any reason you're working on a session pro tools somehow deletes all your paths say like from here to there and they just for some reason deletes them you're like oh crap for some reason, it's not picking up my microphones. You know, no need to sweat. You click the little default button, clicks everything back to what it should be. You know, your analog is one through eight, your eight at's one through eight. If you have something connected through eight at, your speed if and so forth. But um, and you know, that's just uh, you know, give you a brief idea of what that is used for. Like, say we open up something else, and I mean, like you guys can 
name these whatever as you can see that i have but uh you know say you gotta make your own you uh just hit um new path at the bottom there you can make a stereo path you just select where you want the inputs of this path to go say seven and eight and it's the same for the outputs too if you're on that screen now if you open it you see there's no mono thing so that's cool we'll uh, make new sub paths now the new sub paths will already be mono because they're in path number three and then you just select the little mono part to fill it in now with this like i said i know this is basic you know a lot of people may already know this but even for the beginner or even for the advanced person that knows this stuff as you like i said as you get bigger or more into you know your art form and what you do your studio is going to grow and these little organizational skills are very great to practice in the beginning before your studios get real complicated you have wires going everywhere nothing labeled and you're like crap you know i wish i should have did this from the beginning then it's real easy to just add stuff to your system same with your patch bays if you're uh, using those um and you know even if you go to the big commercial studios uh you'll see that um they'll have on their patch bays you know this is my joe meek eq out left and right or you know my 1176 you know in and outs and whatever but um you know and once again you can save these and uh it doesn't matter uh and that actually that actually that brought up a point same with your buses label your buses for like when you use your effects or when you reroute anything reverbs delays phasers flangers distortions all that that's all great to have organized and labeled all in there but um let me see here so i can uh, get to my next point all right so say you get out of that and i bring up my mix window and uh, it also affects in the mix your mix window. You know, you can just go to your inputs. You want to input beater or the bass LNR, the EQ, uh, all that stuff is here. You know, and that's uh, my mono tracks. Same with the stereo tracks. You know, everything's labeled here for you. Whatever you labeled in that screen, buses, all that, and uh, same for your outputs. I have it all going to master. I can change it. Go analog. I can type in headphones. Whatever. And, you know, like I said, this is just a pretty much basic tutorial to get you uh, into the door for more organizational skills and things like that using Pro Tools. Um, that's pretty much the end for this tutorial. Um, I do know I had a few requests for a tutorial on um, vocal mix downs using compressors, uh, DSers, um, EQs, and, you know, how to get your vocals to sit in the mix. I'm working with a rock band. Um, and next week I should be ready for the vocal mix on that. I'll get the permission to see if I can um, use a clip for that and hopefully get that dude uh, who or female, whoever um, asked, uh, get that squared away for you. Um, another person asked me about putting vinyl in the Pro Tools, you know, kind of to categorize or um, there's a word on the archive, archive their music. Um, I don't really do that. Granted, I do sample and stuff. I really don't have a turntable, but um I do, I am doing some uh, drum mix downs coming up and uh, that actually might benefit you because all that stuff that you're asking is all in mastering and that's different uh, with using compressors, limiters, um, EQ, stereo, width enhancers and widening and things like that um, and all that thing, all, sorry, all things like that. Um, so maybe that might help you. I hope to get more videos up soon. I'm not being lazy. I'm just... <laughs> Okay, some of it is lazy, I'm not going to lie, but a lot of it is just I'm real busy outside of the YouTube community. But I hope to do more stuff, the more I get to intervault, or what's the word I want to use? Intermingle, we'll say mingle with uh, the people to watch these, you know, the more successful I think these will be. Um, anyways, this is the end of my tutorial, I'll try to keep this quick, I'm talking too much. Uh, once again, it's your boy Wade D, aka Dream Slide. If you have any other questions, Pro Tools or mixing or audio related, even basic stuff, please don't hesitate to ask. Hopefully I can make a video for you. And basics a lot easier than the more complicated stuff because then I gotta get permissions and crap like that. But uh, there's no question too stupid, too small, too insignificant. Hope this helps somebody. Um, all right, I'm out, later.